Hi everyone, this is Neil Reisetter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax, as you can see. And we're just commencing with this there left ear first, which the patient felt was the worst of the two. And this wax plug extends all the way from the entrance to their eardrum. There is some evidence of some cotton swab misuse. You can see the indentation at the surface, but um, the patient advised that they didn't use anything in their ears. So um, sometimes we just have to take the patient's word, um, but it was really impacted. It, this is the indentation here. You can see that circular crater created by something pushing into it. Um, now around the, the periphery of this wax plug, you've got a thick layer of skin that's semi-shedded, I would say. So part of it's still attached to the ear canal. It's very adhesive, sticky. The oil um, I've just instilled helps with that. It kind of almost helps to break down that adhesiveness. And I'm just trying to separate this plug around the, the, the edge of the canal wall first. Now, uh, patient is a lovely gentleman, but they did... Um, and, and I take it as a compliment, actually, because they felt really comfortable, but they were um, uh, chattering quite a lot during the procedure. In some people's ears, it doesn't affect um, the procedure. You just can't see the canal move. But in this case, um, as they were talking, uh, when you open and close your jaw, it obviously flexes um, some muscles uh, around the jaw and the cartilage portion of the ear canal, in particular, so the outer third, it can come up and down. And it did make it sometimes a bit difficult to perform the procedure. So um, uh, I had to, in a, in a very kind and polite way, just ask the patient if they can just remain still during certain parts. And um, we had a good uh, um, talk after the procedure about various things, and, uh, which was great. So a very uh, interesting patient. Um, uh, had a lot of stories, which was fantastic. And yeah, a very interesting individual. So I've got probably the outer quarter out we're now i would say on the bony part of the ear canal so that previous wax was on the cartilage now we're working on the bony part we've just gone past the second bend that's a good landmark indicator to advise and separate the first and second bend sorry the the is a good boundary to separate the cartilage portion of the ear canal and the bony part so anything towards me um before that second bend is likely to be cartilage and anything beyond that Second bend uh, is likely to be the bony part of the ear canal. So the ear canal is divided into threes, the outer third cartilage, the inner two thirds bone. Sometimes you can also tell by the, the colour of the canal wall. And I don't know if you can see there, just underneath the plug, the ear canal is a bit more red and pink, whereas the closer to, 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 the, to the tip of the endoscope, it's more pale. So because the skin that lines the cartilage is a lot thicker, um, compared in comparison to the skin that lines the bony part of the ear canal. The blood vessels are more visible in the inner two thirds of the ear canal because they're, they're near the surface uh, a lot more than um, in comparison to the cartilage portion. So um, when you've got the blood vessels and blood plumping through, it's going to give that more pinky red appearance. So I'm just trying to manipulate this plug and I'm trying to navigate the bends and twists in the ear canal and it's almost out of the ear now. It's quite a sizable piece. If you wait till the end of the video, you'll see the still images. And you can see probably two thirds of the eardrum, the, the posterior two thirds, but on the anterior canal walls so of the front part of the ear, you've got this sticky bit of wax. I'm just using the fine end. I just want to avoid the bony part. Now you'll see more so in their right ear, but the anterior canal wall is slightly protruded. So it comes to the more of midline. Oh, you saw that on screen there. Just a, a little speck of wax. I'll just sort of vacuum over it. There we are. So I'm just going to mop up the cartilage portion because we've got some of the sticky wax that stained the canal wall. Here we can apply a bit of pressure to the cartilage. It's not uncomfortable for the patient. Uh, if we were doing this on the bony part, then, um, well, we wouldn't be able to do that because it would just be too uncomfortable for the patient and... Um, they'll be screaming at the top of their voice. So this is their right ear. Uh, although this ear 
the patient felt wasn't as bad as the, the left ear. Uh, in terms of removal, it's a bit more tricky. I said they've been using some drops here at the surface. I asked them which drops, I weren't sure, but I suspect it's hydrogen peroxide. And you can always tell when someone's used hydrogen peroxide drops, it turns the wax very mushy and, gl uh, and uh, glutinous. Um, almost like a mashed potato consistency. Sorry to anyone who's having uh, mashed potato for dinner <laughs> this evening. And it can make it a bit more difficult to remove. So I've just put some olive oil spray in here just to help bind the wax together, change the consistency. I'm just going to wipe the lens. Just got a bit, um, a bit stained by all the wet wax that's in the ear. There's a few hairs here, matted. So I'm just trying to work at the um, posterior canal wall, the back section, trying to lift this away. I just want to see more of the ear canal. So I'm not, at the moment, I'm not sure exactly where the ear canal is posteriorly. I can see the ear canal to the right, anteriorly, but posteriorly, I just want to uh, reveal some of the ear canal. So I, I've then got an idea of my boundaries. Um, when you can't see the ear canal then and you're using an instrument, you're always... At the back of your mind, you've got to be wary whether you make contact with the um, the canal wall. So if you embed the instrument too much into the wax, so I always like seeing some ear canal around the edge, and it just um, helps me to plan the rest of the procedure. So I think this is where the patient started talking a bit more here. So I just had to at that point came out and just explained that. Um, when they were talking, the, their jaws moving. Now, quite often, I'm having conversations with patients. Um, sometimes I think, why am I? Because I'm not sure they can hear me with the um, suction probe in. Um, but some patients, the jaw just it doesn't affect um, their, their ear. But with this particular patient, it was, it was making a big, big difference. And slowly we're loosening that. And you can, now I can see, as I said, are all around the edge. I can see the ear canal. This is why an endoscope is so brilliant, the field of view that it provides. Um, and I personally feel that there's no better method of viewing the inside of the ear for when performing ear wax removal than an endoscope. Um, I've got an operating ear to microscope at my clinic. In fact, I've got several. Um, and I've used head, head magnifying loops which I feel are quite limited in terms of magnification, um, depth of view. Um, with an ENT microscope, when I use that, yes, the, the magnification is great, but one of the things that people often say with the ENT microscope is that it gives you binocular vision, and binocular vision is seeing an object with both eyes um, independently, and your brain can then merge the two images, and it gives you depth perception uh, with an endoscope there is 3d endoscope so you, you view it on a monitor and you wear 3d glasses but essentially what we're doing here is viewing it on the screen of i'm using the iphone se actually the um, 2022 version the third generation so because you're viewing it off a flat screen um, you're not able to use binocular vision um, so if i had one eye closed i'm going to get the same view uh, uh, in compared to having both eyes open. But with an ENT microscope, if you just view with one eye, um, you're not going to get that depth perception. But if you've got a very narrow ear canal and the wax is very deep, you still, I don't think you always get that binocular depth perception with an ENT microscope, if truth be told. Because what an ENT microscope tries to do, it artificially converges your into papillary distance. So, in order to see an object in the ear canal um, with both eyes independently, your eyes must be very close together. And, it, and it's not possible because of the diameter of the ear canal, which is about a centimetre uh, in, in height and the width about 0.7. So uh, a microscope artificially, almost like a periscope in a submarine, it converges your eyes closer than, than they really are. So it's artificially bringing them together, uh, but not that they're overlapping which can then enable you to see wax very deep in the ear with both eyes independently. But if you've got a very, very narrow ear and wax very, very deep, you're still not going to be able to converge your interpupillary distance enough to take advantage of 
of the binocular vision now. With an endoscope, you, I still get depth perception. A lot of surgeons do, hence why they do um, endoscopic ear surgery. You just rely on different cues. And one of the cues that I rely on for depth perception with an endoscope is the field of view. When you can see the whole ear canal and the landmarks and the shadows, and when you move the endoscope deeper in the ear and you can see um, the object in front of you magnifying, um, you look at the rate of speed of change so when you're going towards an object and you're looking at that and the, the speed of the, um, the the ear canal on the side we call that motion parallax uh, um, it provides you with depth perception when you obviously touch the earwax you get that sensation so i actually feel i get better depth of perception with an endoscope as opposed to an ent microscope but i suppose also, that is in part because I'm using an endoscope all the time and my, I've, my brain is wired up to use an endoscope. But So within the anti-microscope, you just wouldn't get the same view. You'll see a quarter of the ear canal, um, but it'll be very magnified. And the Waxcope works, so the Waxcope is the other product that I'm soon to be launching. It works on the same principle, uh, more or less, of an anti-microscope, but the view is very magnified and narrowed. Again, you don't want to necessarily say you get binocular vision, the... the, the the the, de the defined version of binocular vision and depth perception, I would say, with the wax scope, because again, you're looking on a, a 2D screen. But the wax scope uh, is more user friendly to use than an endoscope. With an endoscope, I didn't realize how difficult it would be um, f to, to train and for others to acquire that skill. Um, it is a very difficult skill, and I appreciate that a bit more now um, to train people to use it. And that's because you need a lot of bilateral integration, you're having to use both hands simultaneously uh, as well as your your eyes because you're having to use the so the endoscope right now uh, you won't you can't see it because you're inside the ear but it, the left hand side tip of the endoscope is being used to stretch the ear canal open and wide open and to straighten the ear canal and also to visualize the wax and simultaneously i'm then using my right hand with the instrument so you constantly have to make little fine motor movements with both hands and they have to be in synchrony. And if not, um, obviously it's a very difficult procedure to learn. So the wax scope, like an ENT microscope, it has a speculum, which is a black uh, plastic funnel, which is hollow. It's wide at one end, narrows, tapers at the other end, and the tapered end goes into the ear. And you can use the speculum instead to straighten the ear canal uh, and widen it. But that inhibits some of the view, but it's still... Um, it's still very, very good. If, if you visit the link on uh, the description, if you're um, watching an all formats, you can visit the Clearwax YouTube channel where I've uploaded about 100 and I forgot, I have more than an excess of 100 videos with the wax scope. I haven't in a while, but I was just waiting for the launch now, which is imminent. Um, but yeah, an endoscope, just, just the view it provides, it's unparalleled. So I'm just mopping up near the entrance. On this side, the anterior canal wall is even more prominent. And the wax plug was lodged behind that, so you can see this side is a bit more tricky. But we got there in the end. And we're just going to now stretch the ear open, trying to view the whole ear. So part of that eardrum is not visible to the naked eye, the anterior portion, because of that bony part. That's protruding, protruding outwards. So that's that wax plug. You can see the top one. I think that was from the left side. Just see how dark it is. It's almost pitch black. Um, so it's oxidized, it's been there for a while. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.